Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. In this video, we're gonna look at what problems you may have when your motorcycle doesn't start. Now over winter, you've obviously had your bike on a trickle charge. You drained your fuel tank or you brimmed your fuel tank. Uh, you overinflated your tires. You got the bike off the cold garage floor and you put carpet underneath it. You cleaned it meticulously before you put it away. There's no salt whatsoever on your motorcycle. However, if you didn't do all that, which I've confessed I've done in the past, you may have trouble when it comes to starting your motorcycle once spring erupts. So let's look at the problems you may face when you come to starting your motorcycle and how to rectify those problems. Before starting your motorcycle after winter, first rule is make sure you're in a well vented room. By that I mean don't try starting your KR1S in your kitchen for the first time. Make sure your garage doors are open, make sure the windows are open in your shed or alternatively get your motorcycle outside. Potentially you might have a little oil resting in one of the cylinder heads or in the exhaust so it may smoke a little bit more. Last thing you want to do is set off the smoke alarm and get carbon dioxide fumes. So get the bike outside or well ventilated garage or shed. For reference, we've got the garage doors open, we've got a nice breeze going through, good ventilation, so we should be fine. So we have to remember, before we press the start button, that an engine needs to suck, squeeze, bang, blow. You can refer to our other videos where we explain the revolution of an engine. So if it has to suck in air, we need to check the air box and the air filter. Depending on your bike, depends on where that is, on this guzzy, it's easy to get to. It's underneath the seat is the air filter. I've known scenarios where people have checked their airbox after six months, and there's been a hamster or a mouse or other living animal in there. So check that, get your airbox checked. Don't forget the blow size. You've got suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Is the exhaust clear? Some people put bungs over the exhaust to stop condensation and corrosion. Some people put a rag on the end. Some people find their kids' toy cars or whatever down the exhaust. Just make sure that is clear and the air can leave the bike and check that the air box is fine so air can enter the bike. Now it's time to start your motorcycle. Simply switch on the ignition. If you've got a manual choke, you need to operate that. Leave the throttle alone and press the starter button. Let the starter motor run for around five seconds and then let go of the start button. If it doesn't start, try a few more times but only once or twice. After that, don't leave your thumb on the starter button. You'll just burn out your starter motor and drain your battery. Once the bike fires up, do not blip the throttle. I know you're really tempted, you've not heard your bike for six months and you want to make a racket, but don't. If I asked you to jump out of bed and run into a 100 meter sprint straight away, you'd soon complain. Your engine has been sat lovingly asleep for six months and doesn't want to be jolted into excitement at 11,000 RPM. Let the bike warm up gradually. Once you feel a bit of warmth, reduce the manual choke if necessary. If you've got a water cool bike, Wait till it naturally comes up to temperature and allow the thermostat to kick in to get the fans going. Again, this is where it's really important to keep it ventilated. Make sure the garage doors are open, the shed doors open, kitchen window, wherever you are. As the bike is warming up gradually, this is a good time to double check everything. Just make sure the horn, the lights, the indicators, and everything's working whilst the engine's running. And remember, the bike is now warm. So when you push it back into the garage, don't push it against all the paint thinners, don't grab hold of the exhaust, let the bike cool down, then put it away and put your bike cover back on. What you don't want to do is throw your bike cover back on and have a nasty fire in your shed. So that's the perfect scenario. We press the starter button and it started first time. Everything is running perfect, couldn't be happier. However, that's not always the case. So let's look at a scenario when the bike doesn't start. If you're old, like me, you'll remember kickstarts. Basically, when you kickstarted the engine, you fired the bike into life by manually turning over the engine. Now, We've got starter motors, easy. The problem is the starter motor needs a battery in order to turn the starter motor, which turns your engine. So when you come to your motorcycle and you switch it on and you have no ignition, no lights, and you press your starter button and it's completely dead, it's nine out of 10 times a battery problem. If we do that and the starter motor turns really, really slowly and your lights go dimmer as you start to turn the starter motor, Again, nine out of 10 times, it's a battery problem because your battery hasn't got enough power. So let's look at the battery. 
If we have no power going to the start motor, we obviously need to look at the battery. On this Moto Guzzi V7, it's easy to access via the side panel. On some models, it can be quite difficult. Certain adventure bikes that are very uh, designed to be water resistant so you can go through deep water, it's sometimes difficult to get to the battery. But generally, it'll be on the side or under the seat. If you're unsure, contact your local dealer or have a look at the manual. So once we've got access to the battery, we need to do a visual check. Does everything look okay? Is anything corroded? Is anything leaking? Secondly, are all the terminals tight? On this battery, we've fitted heated grip, so you can see the heated grip terminals. So are they down securely? Are they okay? Finally, we need to know if the battery is in good order. We can simply remove the battery, take this to a local garage, and they'll do a battery check. It might be in perfectly good order and just simply needs recharging, or the battery may be dead and it needs replacing. So, we know we have power to the start motor and we fitted a new battery. Now we're on to the stupid mode. My best reason why bikes won't start. We turn on the ignition, we have power, we press the start button and nothing happens. And that's simply because it's in gear. Put it into neutral and it should start. Now the motor guzzy won't start if it's in gear with a side stand down. Some bikes won't start unless the clutch is in. There's certain different ways and certain parameters of certain models. But do, do check that you've got everything in the right order. Does the clutch need to be in? Does the side stand need to be up or down? Is the side stand fully up? Does the center stand need to be up? It sounds obvious, but I've seen this so many times and I've done it. I've sat there on a Suzuki pressing the start button for getting to pull the clutch in. It's a stupid thing to do. It's highly amusing when it happens to your friends. But just think about what needs to be done. If you've bought your bike recently, only had it for a month, put it away for six months, it's an easy one to do. So hopefully now, the side stand down, we're in neutral, we should start. Perfect. So we've fitted the new battery. Um, we've either got power or no power to the dash or the starter motor still isn't turning. So it might be a fuse problem. Now the fuses that you can access are usually under the seat. Again, refer to your manual or contact your local dealer. On the guzzy, they're very easy to access, they're all here. So once you're checking your fuses, make sure the connection is okay, make sure the fuse isn't broken. You should have spare fuses. This may appear a little bit daunting, but if everything is switched off and you use your manual, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Once you pull the fuse out, you'll, see, you'll make a visual check, you'll see that it's broken. Once you see the broken one, replace it, and away you go. We're on to the next stage. We have power, because we've got a new battery. We've got lights and ignition. It's in neutral. We've got the procedure down to a T, but we're pressing the starter button and nothing is happening. Again, don't keep doing it and ruin the starter motor. The next thing we're gonna look at is fuel. Now, how long has the fuel been stored in the bike? On a fuel injected bike, on a modern motorcycle, we're looking at around six months before the petrol starts to lose its octane, before it starts to lose its value. Over six months, it's gonna, that's gonna reduce. If the bike has been stood for a couple of years and it's on carbs, then you're probably gonna to have to clean the carbs and drain the tank. Fresh fuel will help if the bike's been stood for around six months. So let's check the fuel. Make sure there's fuel in it, make sure it's fresh fuel. If it's got a fuel tap, make sure that's on, and then we'll give it another go and see if it starts. So we're on the final stages, and we can just run through what we've done. We've checked the fuel, we know that that's good fuel and there's fuel going to the engine. We've got a brand new battery on there and it's sending power, the lights come on, the clocks come on, everything is fine. The start motor is turning, we've checked the fuses and they're all good and we know there's nothing living in the airbox, and we know the exhaust is clear. So if it's still not starting, we need to check the spark plug. So luckily with the motor guzzy, it's pretty easy to access. Um, on some models, this might be a bit difficult. But while you're here, check the HT leads. Check that they're not full of water, they're not corroded, that they're not kinked, and they look like they're in good condition. When you remove the plug, be gentle, and check for any telltale signs. Check the gappage. Uh, if this is covered in fuel and covered in liquid, then it's probably being flooded and it was getting too much fuel and wasn't firing. Uh, check the color of the spark plug as well. I mean, this looks like it's in good condition, so there's no reason why the spark shouldn't be good on this. So let's give it a try. 
I've attached the spark plug to the HT lead and I've rested the spark plug on the side of the cylinder head and I'm well out of the way, not touching anything. Give the starter motor a couple of turns and check the spark. So we've got a good quality spark there. Now it's time to check this side. Obviously, if you've got a four cylinder bike or a three cylinder bike, you're gonna to need to check all spark plugs. Again, this might get a bit complicated, especially if you've got something like a V4, something small like an NC30, which is incredibly difficult to get into the spark plugs. We're coming to the conclusion of our video. We hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions, we'll try and answer them below and don't forget to subscribe. Luckily, we've had this perfect example of a Guzzi V7. It's in perfect working order, low mileage, and it's going to its new proud owner very shortly. We know we've got a brand new battery. We know we've got good quality fuel. Everything is working perfect order. So we turn the key, kill the switch, make sure it's in neutral and it should fire. Perfect. And there's no need to rev it. Just let it tick over and warm up naturally. We don't all live in a perfect world with brand new motorcycles. I've spent many a winter month stuck underneath an RG125 trying to get it started. Just remember what the engine needs. It needs fuel, it needs to ignite it, it needs air. Take your time, go through the procedures, look at your manual. If you need anything clarifying, consult your local dealer or a local bike store. There's no problem with admitting that you've got a problem and you need expert advice. But if you go through the simple procedures that we've showed you, it should hopefully fire up and you should be on your biking way. So let's check the fuel and something else and something else. Then I need what? We're not going to do that. I need the bit where you fire it up and that as well. Again? Yeah. Oh, you need that as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, that's not what you said. You yeah. said from the fire up. Oh, sorry. No, well, I didn't, but that's what you thought. So that's okay. I'll forgive you for your misunderstanding of me talking. Sweet! <laughs> So if we've got no power, going to the start motor, we obviously need to look at the battery first. On this motor goes your V-Cell, v, -cell, v, -cell, v -cell. Get your bike outside if it's not waning and, not waning? <laughs> oh, oh.